Hi, Cat Calls. Welcome, Cat Vine. I'm Cat Vine. I'm your host. Thank you so much for coming to this week's edition of Cat Calls. Uh, before we started the show officially, I was telling everyone how important it is to go to votesaveamerica.com. It's right there in the chat. Uh, that has resources for signing up to vote, registering to vote, getting other people registered to vote. I just signed up to do some phone banking. Uh, that's where you text or call registered voters in your area, inform them about what they'll find on the ballot, which motivates people to get to the polls. It makes a fucking difference. I live in San Francisco with a bunch of political scientists and they have told me over and over again what a difference that actually makes. And if you are anything like me, you woke up today pissed as hell, ready to do something to make some actual change in this country. I don't know if you guys know, I won't be political the whole time, but Donald Trump is not planning to concede the election whether or not he gets the votes or not. So if you have any sort of like you know, if you kind of like democracy, in theory, anyway, uh, you should go to votesaveamerica.com. You should get involved. You should do more than just, like, sit around tweeting about, like, say your name and stuff. But this show isn't just about politics. <laughs> we also interview cool artists and have interactive conversations with them. You here in the chat. Yes. And today's guest is, round of applause, St. Punk. Whoa! Round of applause! Is it working? Is it not working? Oh, God damn it. Anyway, look at that. Is it working? No. I had this whole thing set up where applause is gonna play. Anyway, it's fine. It's a live show. We, we live, we learn. Um, St. Punk is uh, born and raised in California. Uh, he's a relative newcomer to the dance scene, but he has roots in the rock world that go even deeper. In the last couple of years, he's released records on Chami's confession label, Don Diablo's Hexagon, and Armada Music. So even though he's only been active for a few years, he's done a lot of serious work. Uh, his music is very textural, and if you know me, you know that I love good texture in my music. Our guest last week, Tisha, has great texture as well. You should check her out too. Um, but St. Punk's music is full of whiplash noise and gritty bits and the beats are always driving funky house rhythms. Uh, his house music has a lot of bass in it. Uh, it's always infused with great club energy and it's for that reason that I feel he's the perfect guest for this week because he really draws on that riotous, rebellious, frustrating energy that we all find ourselves sitting with right now uh, in the United States of America and around the world. In fact, his latest two sing singles, Molotov Cocktail and Fight, were directly inspired by the protests that continue to rage in the streets of the United States today. Um, he's actually been very vocal about this election and wanting to see change in our country as well. We'll get into that a little bit, but we'll also just talk about his influences and what he's been working on in quarantine. Uh, before we get him on the call, I want to play that song Fight for You right now. He's got a cool visualizer for it. So we're going to have a dance party in our living rooms or our car, oh, in your cars, you know, drive safe. But wherever you are, let's have a dance party to fight. And when we come back, St. Punk will be on the line. So get your questions ready. And uh, yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. I swear. It'll be fun. It'll be good. All right. <laughs> All right, this is Fire Glue Music. You're right. And are you ready for St. Punk? I think he's here. Say yeah, yeah, hey! <laughs> I always like draw suspense as if like I'm not gonna have the guest right here <laughs> in two seconds. <laughs> but that's part of showbiz, that's part of showbiz. <laughs> St. Punk, thank you so much for joining me today. It's thank such an honor to have you. Absolutely. Um, we were just listening to Fight and watching the visualizer, and I know that you, that's like your latest single. Uh, I'd love to hear the story behind that one. Um, yeah, I mean, more or less, you know, it's just kind of my, my, um, it's my therapy, really, you know? Uh, I released Molotov Cocktail. That was a single, my original single before this one, before the Bro Hug collab. And that was just kind of, um, you know, my, my way of getting out my, my anger and my frustration with all the inequality that's been going on with the Black Lives Movement. And this was just kind of a follow-up to that. 
um, you know, there's still a lot of feelings and there's still a lot of shit that's going on. And so just, you know, there's, there's no reason to, to stop it. You know, there's just, you know, you got to keep going. I totally agree. I was saying before you came onto the show, uh, I woke up in just such a mood today. Like yeah. it, it's tough because you vacillate, at least I do. I vacillate between like, just, I can't feel anything anymore to, I'm just so pissed <laughs> like, I, to just yeah. sad. Like, I don't know. How have you, how are you feeling today? <laughs> um, you know, uh, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of all over the place, you know, that there's, there's no real right way to feel about, about any of this. It's, yeah. it's kind of, it's, it's all, I mean, a lot of it's new as far as, you know, COVID goes, but, um, you know, with, with the injustice, it's just, it feels like another day of the same shit. And it's just like, what, what can we, you know, what can we do about this? And it's, it's really frustrating Yeah, because, you know, you, you try and make yourself heard and we, you know, we try and do protests and everything. And, and at the end of the day, it's like, does it, is it, does it mean nothing? Does it work I know. Less? Yeah. So. It, it was tough for a lot of people to see the Brianna Taylor, uh, hearing results yesterday because speak yeah. about like d what does it do i don't know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yeah it's, it's tough yeah. yeah i was a. Uh, I did drop a link in the chat here and i'll tell you right now and then we can move on to some other yeah, things yeah. too but sure. um there's a website called vote save america and okay. they've got resources for registering people to vote and actually signing up for things like phone banking so you can call or text people in your area, voters in your area, and not tell them who to vote for, but inform them about the rest of the things on the ballot, like different amendments and other candidates. And that was my thing to do today. I signed up to do some text banking later to tell people in Florida where I'm registered about what amendments mean. Um, so maybe something you can do as well when being in the studio doesn't feel like enough. <laughs> yeah, no, amazing. Yeah, for sure. What, what, I'm, what I'm planning on doing is creating a um, a little piece that I can put onto my Instagram that, Ooh. that is all about how to vote in this election and how to, how to register, how, you know, when, when early voting starts. I mean, I know some, some has for some states, um, but yeah. something that's super easy to share with everyone, um, posted on my, you know, on my Instagram, and, uh, definitely planning on doing something like that. Yeah, Same. well, that's a great oh. idea, because yeah. now yeah. we're in the final countdown. I know, it's crazy, <laughs> like six, six weeks now. It's too wild. And this year, Election Day is my birthday, so it's, like, extra weird for me. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I'm just You're like, a Scorpio. I am a Scorpio, yes. <laughs> I know, I might, I could throw you off with all this colorful energy, but... I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's a dark, mysterious monster in here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Um, so you are in L.A. Uh, are you born and raised L.A.? I believe you're born and raised Californian. Definitely born and raised um, in L.A. Moved around a little bit. Um, Southern California, though, you know, um, I was born in Whittier, which is this kind of smaller town, um, sort of sort of right outside of the main L.A. area. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, still L.A. County. But um, and then after that, moved. Moved around Southern California down to Temecula, if you know where that is. Mm, I don't, um, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it sounds like, close to Mexico. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's uh it's about well, it's about two hours from Mexico, um but it's the it, it's the southern wine country of California. Ooh, yeah. not a bad place yeah. to live. Were you old yeah. enough to drink wine, or were you just like um, teased I, by well, it all day? <laughs> uh, so I I got a job at a winery when I was like 20 um and so worked there for a little bit that's, that's awesome learning about wine yeah yeah so are you like a, a little sommelier there you got some totally. tips yeah, what what's yeah, your favorite yeah. kind of wine super into wine um i mean it really depends on what you're eating that's very yeah. true that's how yeah. i know you're really an yeah, expert exactly. i'm like is it red i'll drink it fuck <laughs> it <laughs> does, that, does that have alcohol in it yeah ah, that'll do the trick <laughs> um, we've been getting into natural wines though, you know, mm. uh, for, for a couple of years now, lots of natural wines, like pet nats and, Ooh. um, just good natural stuff. Man, you, maybe one day, you know, I've seen a couple DJs and producers do things like 
come up with a coffee roast as part of a merch line. You oh, yeah, you could totally. come up with a, a wine li- line oh, someday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, would love, I would love to do that. I would love to, to come up with wine. I would love to come up with, I'm also super into tequila. Ooh. I think my own tequila would be awesome. You've got a margarita right now, I heard. Yeah. <laughs> if yes. I had known, I would have prepared my own. I'll just have oh, some coffee. Yeah, <laughs> If you're at home, you got to cheers along. Uh, <laughs> well, that's really cool. Um, I want to hear a little bit about what it was like for you growing up in Southern California. I know that before you got into producing electronic music, you were in a number of rock bands. Uh, were you just kind of like the music kid from the time you turned 12 onward? Or is that just part of your yeah. blood being in California? Yeah, honestly, that's, yeah, you kind of nailed it. Um, <laughs> when I was like 12, 13, I started taking guitar lessons. It's awesome. Um, I See, because I, cause I can relate. That's yeah. <laughs> Me and yeah. my friends are like that, too. I never had real lessons, but I was like, punk songs are three chords. I can figure this oh, yeah. out. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's all power chords. Yeah, so, <laughs> um, yeah, so I started playing guitar, and then, you know, just kind of from there, I, I started to really get into... Um, a lot of like punk stuff like the vandals and um uh i mean not not punk but nirvana of course yes um, well uh, everyone yeah. has to get into nirvana yeah, exactly. especially yeah. as a like angry 12 year old yeah exactly <laughs> the beatles was the very first song or um uh, eight days a week yes their song was the very first song that i learned in general but Smells Like Teen Spirit was the first, like, real rock song that I learned. So, I, and, honestly, both very key steps in any young musician's uh, practice. Uh, yeah. I think that sometimes uh, when you're not super initiated into the Beatles, you're like, oh, old Beatles is cheesy. And it's like, no, no the way. Beatles are God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I went through a whole phase of of listening to all Beatles albums, listening to all Doors stuff. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So LA, the Doors. Oh uh, yeah. I went, I went through a whole phase of that. I, I wanted to be Jim Morrison. Who doesn't? <laughs> One of my best friends in high school was like such a little uh, Jim Morrison Uh-oh. copycat. Uh-oh. You got, you're back. You got a little caught there, but you're back. Hey. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's just like that. Saint Ninja. <laughs> um, did you ever like walk around the streets of LA listening to Doors songs, like trying to like this is where they were, or this is where he wrote LA Woman, or like, yeah. no, no, I didn't do that, but like playing at the whiskey, you know, you definitely try and like put yourself into how it was in the past. Yeah. Like, being in the green room, being backstage, you're like man, like, I wonder what it was like with, with Jim Morrison and whoever here, or like being at the Viper Room. Yeah. You know, all these stories of like Johnny Depp and like, um, like River Phoenix and, you know, all the celebs that party there, you know, so you, you kind of try and like put yourself in that scenario. It's, it's, you know, it's never as cool, but. Yeah, of, co- of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Oh man, yeah. if only we could all be flies on those walls, like oh, completely. one time. I mean, you know, there's so many. I mean, with all of the clubs, like the Roxy Whiskey, Viper Room, um, when the Key Club was still here, um, you know, there the backstages didn't really change much. Yeah. And there's tons of crap and dirt. And <laughs> That's what I was imagining. I'm everywhere. like, no one's cleaned it since the 70s. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So you're just like, oh, man, I bet Jim Morrison's sweat is right <laughs> in this corner over here. Let me lick it. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> And that's how COVID started. No, I'm just yeah, kidding. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Man, that's so yeah, fun, though. What brought us here. Yeah. Well, I also read that you got started uh, on your musical career by soundtracking your friends and your skateboard videos. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's true. yeah so, uh, yeah, yeah um, when I used to skate and I used to, like, rollerblade a bunch, um, you know, yes, to, rollerblading. That's how I know we're the same age. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I used to uh, like film ourselves, and and then you know you gotta have a soundtrack to it. So I used to 
to make edits of the video and throw in a bunch of like uh like suicide machines and yes. descendants and no effects and yes dude it's all, all like like cky and shit that was the oh, thing yeah. you had to do yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah totally yeah so i used to do that a bunch and then that actually kind of led me into you know where I'm at now where I can shoot my own like music videos and do my yeah. own photography. I love that. I ask, I mean, as is evidenced by this show right here, I'm a big believer in the DIY approach to creation. Yeah. Like, and it's only gotten easier with time. Like now you've got a great camera in your hand that is also your phone <laughs> at all times. Your phone shoots 4K at 24 <laughs> frames per second. It's like, this is this is exactly what I wanted. Like right, ago. I know you can do slow mo like yeah. like that. You can speed it up. <laughs> you can like edit right there. I mean, imagine the skateboard videos you could make. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, oh man, it's it's amazing the technology. And I mean, with with editing, you know, there's so many templates. They just like make it for you practically. Yeah. And, and you know, same with music. Really, you can. So many people have music at their fingertips now. Absolutely. I know. Okay, so speaking of music, let's continue on our chronology of your life a little bit here. <laughs> um, when did you start playing in bands? What were your bands like? What was the last band like that you were in? I think you were the singer of that band. Yeah, yeah. Um, last band was kind of like, you know, it's hard to figure out what, what kind of genre it was it was rock but like people have said it's a mix of lincoln park and foo fighters sort of oh interesting mix <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, where it's like it's like hard rock sort of but there's no there's no screaming yeah it's like i don't know it's like modern it's weird i fuck I mean, with that though yeah, yeah. Do you, is any of the music online? Like, are you too embarrassed? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't put that out there yet, but, you know, it's around. I'm sure people will stumble yeah. across it at some point. Yeah, um, well, I might stumble across it myself. Yeah. I might yeah. do a little bit of digging. <laughs> Just because I want to know what uh, Linkin Park meets the Foo Fighters sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> Um, conversation after this. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We can have a meeting after the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Glue Music says he's uh, he or she, I'm not gendering Glue Music, uh, is going to dig around as well. So now there's a fun Easter egg hunt going yeah, on the yeah. internet. <laughs> yeah. It's all about the hunt. That's why I'm not saying anything. Exactly. It's more fun when you earn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Actually, I was just thinking it'd be so, like, have you ever dug up any of your old skateboard videos and, like, put those on Instagram or something? That would be kind of funny. Uh, no, I haven't. I, I found a photo the other day of me, like, when I was super young, posing with my buddies, and all of our shirts were off, and we were just, like, yes. standing back to back. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, I, I found that one. Some, I mean, some old stuff is just, I don't know. I where. know. It's Lost like, forever. Yeah. Hard exactly. drives in piles somewhere, like, good and, lord. Yeah, and some is, like, VHS tapes that, Yes. I don't you know, I gotta go to the pawn shop. And, uh, <laughs> just like, it would be such a great aesthetic, though. You should you should get back to those roots for a video sometime. You should do like a, a fake skateboard, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the whole VHS like static. It would be so good. Yeah, for sure. Um. So, I imagine, and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm taking a guess here, mm -hmm. but was your move toward electronic music one of those situations where it's like, all right. I can just do this all by myself on a computer <laughs> and I'm in control. I mean, yeah, more or less. I mean, I was doing all of the demos for the band. Oh, okay. Um, and so I was already doing it on the computer and kind of learning that way through, through Pro Tools. Um, and then just as the band fizzled out, I was like, I'm going to do my own thing. Yeah. You know? and I, I, was, I was kind of always pushing the band in general to kind of like, do more this, do more that, and kind of progress. So it, it seemed like a natural, natural uh, uh, progression for me, you know, just to kind of do it myself. Yeah. How did it feel to work on your first few tracks? I mean, was there a learning curve? Uh, was it something you'd always been kind of doing, or? <laughs> it, it was. I mean, it's definitely been a learning curve, just yeah. in general. Like, <laughs> going from going from 
doing all rock acoustic bass, mm. like it, you know, to electronic sounds. It was like, fuck, I don't like this. Is you know, it's new. Yeah. To a and so, yeah, it was definitely it. It took time to kind of learn, um, you know, what the right arrangement is for these kinds of songs. What the right sounds are. What you know. What, it's just yeah, it's totally different. But um, that's the great part about music. You learn something every day. I yeah. still learn stuff every day. Oh my gosh, you have to. I'm still, yeah, I'm still watching YouTube tutorials about things that I never knew about. So it's it's great. Is there a new trick you've learned recently that you're really excited about? A new trick that I learned recently. Um, hmm. Let's see. Uh, not really. Um, I mean, I always learn things here and there. I mean, it's like super technical too. Right. Yeah. You're like, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I learned, yeah. I mean, uh, one, one thing that's really cool that I, uh, stumbled across not recently but like in the past year was um the the uh concept of uh, what is it called oh the shepherd's tone what's that what that is it's it's a tone that is created by overlapping mm. a a note that ascends but then it like folds back into itself and it never the note never gets higher, but it sounds like it's getting higher. That's cool. So it it's a weird concept that um that Hans Zimmer uses a lot. Nice uh, in his scores. Uh, it's really weird, but it's cool. I fuck with that. Yeah, check it out. It's called the Shepherd's Tone. Yeah, I mean, music is really weird, and that's when you kind of remind yourself that like it's all moving math, and there's all kinds of weird shit you can do that is just <laughs> playing with oh, sound waves. <laughs> well, yeah. Totally. Oh, I, I did actually just watch something yesterday or the day before about um, pop music nowadays really rely on what's called the supertonic. Oh, is that is, a chord structure? Which is the second note in a chord or in a, in a scale. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, so like the C scale, in like C major, the second note would be a D. So... Uh, melodies nowadays in pop music really rely on. Oh, uh oh. If a song's in C major, hey, <laughs> there you are. In, <laughs> if a song's in C major, they rely on uh, using a lot of the D note throughout the melody. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, the weekend does it like constantly. It kind of that's his sound. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw a funny video the other day where someone like just tore into him a little bit. I mean, The weekend's great. I love The weekend. I'm just going to say that out loud uh, for the record. But someone did have this really fun thing where they showed that like all of his vocal uh, melodies are pretty much the same. It's like that over and over again. Yeah, it's like... It's like da but it's great. We love it. We want to hear you more. Give me more yeah. of that. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, yeah. So, so that's 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 what is called the supertonic. He hangs oh. out the supertonic the whole time. Joey headset says the supertonic pairs well with ultra gin. So ultra we can... gin, yeah. <laughs> next time you hit the bar, get that supertonic uh, yeah. and ultra gin, and you'll have a next hit. Time we hit the bar. <laughs> Why you gotta? Why you gotta make me cry? I know. I didn't even mean it that way. Our bars at home. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, man. What was the last time that you went out before all this crazy shit happened? Was it your own show, or did you get to like just go out with friends? Last time I went out and like hung out with people was uh, literally like three days before we quarantined, like officially mm -hmm. on. March 15th. Um, and so like that weekend prior, we went down to Orange County and hung out with some friends. And wow. Did you have any fun. idea what was coming or you were just, that was just like your plan to hang out? Uh, I mean, we, you know, we kind of, you know, we were following it along and just like, hmm, like, all right, this is weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, you know, I think we'll be okay hanging out with our friends down here. Like who knows? And then we came back and, uh, that was when, like, L.A. was like, all right, we got to lock down. And we're like, fuck. Yeah. And, yeah. And 
the most stressful part about that was like trying trying to go with food and trying to oh my god the toilet paper rush of 2020 <laughs> the, yeah the, the lines and just the, the insanity and... i know it's so weird i don't know why people had to freak out so fucking hard like yo it's like just stay inside but it was scary no one had ever really experienced something like this before you know yeah it was it was the the unknown right yeah everyone's afraid of the unknown so it's it was just kind of like fuck we don't know what to do like how like what's gonna happen yeah what was it like for you in the beginning um i know everyone kind of had these memes going around that was like now we have time to do that thing we've been putting off and it's like but you're not gonna do shit everyone's stressed the fuck out <laughs> like... oh yeah no, sure. <laughs> i was definitely stressed um what what ended up happening for for us because i lived with my girlfriend mm -hmm. um which sucked was we we ended up both getting covid you did yeah but oh my god i'm so glad you're okay now in the beginning i i was like ah, i don't know i feel just kind of weird like i don't know i was trying to like work in the studio and i i just couldn't like i had like crazy fatigue just like ah, oh, i gotta lay down and i was getting like sweats and oh my god yeah super super weird and like one day i had a fever of like 99.3 um chest was getting a little tight uh just it was kind of this weird like something not right feeling you know yeah um and that that lasted for for like i don't know two weeks or so and then i thought like oh, like maybe this is just anxiety or maybe this is yeah. you know, you're, you're just trying to give excuses you're like oh, yeah, yeah, just, exactly. uh... um and then so two weeks later like literally two weeks later my girlfriend uh developed a cough and we hadn't gone out at all for two wow. weeks. We hadn't gone outside the house. Like, we weren't doing anything. That's crazy. She, she, she got a cough, and that was the end. And she, she was sick for, like, three weeks. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm so glad she's okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. So it's and it, it, it's been kind of an up-and-down roller coaster, uh, like, months after that, just because there's lingering symptoms. That, That's what I hear. Yeah. Um, now, now I'm feeling, feeling pretty good for the most part. Yeah, that's good to hear. Yeah, I'm good. like, okay, so then when, after you survived COVID, did all the protests break out? Cause like, that's some epic yeah. whiplash <laughs> in no, your life. No, I mean, this, this year has just been kind of crazy. You know? I know. Um, so, so, it, uh, like she started feeling better, like the beginning of May. Um, so we had like a good month until like all the protests started the protests started like may 26 something like that yeah who can know anymore five years ago two seconds ago yeah. <laughs> really wow well i'm really impressed that you found yourself being creatively inspired in the midst of all of that like was creating songs like molotov cocktail and fight was that i mean you said before it was like therapy but uh was it just i guess you just had to do it like yeah, you know, it just for for so long, I, you know, kind of with you know with political you know, with political things, I've always kind of had my own opinions, of course, and but kind of kept them to myself. And this year, and with everything that's been going on, I realized like fuck that, like I have a platform, whether you know small, you know, I I can still reach a certain amount of people mm -hmm. that I wouldn't have been able to last year. Yeah. So. Like I'm just gonna do what I can to to educate and you know make make my voice heard and make everyone else's voice heard and just kind of was inspired. I actually, like woke up one morning with with those lyrics in my head. And, the Molotov uh, cocktail ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just was like, I gotta just put this down and kind of just came. Yeah. It just came in like a day. So. What is the recording in that one? The it sounds like a police recording. Oh yeah, so that was uh, so that was the actual recording um, uh, when when the first protests were starting um, in New York. Uh, that was the the actual uh, police dispatch um, where they were talking about the protesters and. and um, That's so just, crazy. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's, not, it's, not, it's like fuck that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. I gotta put this in the song and yeah. I know. And, and as I was saying, it's good because your music captures that kind of frustration and 
oh, just like grr, grr feeling that I think we have. Yeah. And it's a nice way to get that out without necessarily throwing a Molotov cocktail. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> do I, like, do I want people to, you know, throw Molotov cocktails at cops? Like, no. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying it's just like, you know, when, when NWA was, you know, singing about fuck the police, like, mm -hmm. it's just kind of like they're talking about what's going on and their feelings and, you know, it's cathartic. And yeah. That's kind of how I meant it. What are some of the jams that are getting you through this moment uh, besides the songs that you're working on yourself? What are your go-to rage jams? Oh, I mean, Rage Against the Machine. Ah, it's almost like the name's right there. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Rage Against the Machine, like one hundred percent. They're they're the they're the epitome of, of like. And they were like, gonna be on tour this year, and now they can't right? tour. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a lot of them, um, you know, run the jewels. Yes, so, so good. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of like, I try and try and kind of uh, disconnect a little bit like at night or like on the weekends when I'm having some dinner and try and yeah. get, like a, like a visa vibes, you know, <laughs> put, like an Ibiza live webcam on my TV. To, like, nice. Yeah. yeah kind of like get out of the, out of that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean like, uh, you know, the use I've been listening to a, a mm. bunch um, some incubus. Oh, I was just listening to Make Yourself uh, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. They're my jam. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I've been not been listening to this enough, so that's yeah. good. Incubus is in the air. Yeah, totally. I heard um, you are a Billy Joel fan. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Super, yeah. I feel yeah, like that. That's, that's definitely my parents doing. Yeah, big yeah, Billy Joel like, fans. Yeah, just like I mean, you know, you you, you kind of take a lot of their musical preference into your own definitely you get older right mm -hmm. so uh so billy joel fleetwood mac i was just gonna say uh, fleetwood mac for me that's James, a big James Taylor. yes um yeah. how does music like that influence what you do with your harder sound are there elements there that maybe people wouldn't necessarily think are making its way through uh but maybe you still kind of feel their influence when you're creating so, yeah, I think when, so when I was in the band, I would, I would study a lot of, you know, these people of like Aerosmith. Yeah, uh, another good one. Just other like good songwriters. Uh, and I was the actual songwriting, you know, um, and I, um, you got me? Yeah, you're there. You, went, you, you, did, you did blip for a second, but I knew yeah, you'd come yeah. back. So. I saw you kind of like pause. <laughs> um, so I would study the actual songwriting and, uh, I guess that is what is included in my music now is my, my melody choices, my, my songwriting structure, my, my vocal heavy productions, I yeah. guess, um, would, uh, I guess kind of come back to that a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I guess also like the way that I mix mm. the music is, is a little, on the rock side of things, maybe. Right. Going back yeah. to your band days when yeah, exactly. you said you were making those demos. So yeah, you, yeah. you know what you're doing. Yeah. When, when we were in the band, we had a uh, production deal with this, um, with this mix engineer named Mark Needham, um, who has done, uh, he was the first guy to break the killers. So wow. He, I love them too. <laughs> uh, but he has done Fleetwood Mac. Wow. Uh, Chris Isaac, he's, I mean, he's got a long list, Imagine Dragons. Um, and I kind of yeah. learned a lot from, from him as far as like mixing and just. That's a really wonderful resource. Yeah, totally. So I kind of, I think a little bit of that influence. Wow. That's so cool. Well, yeah, your sound, I just want to say as well that what I find so appealing about your music is it's so textural. Like mm. it's got such a. I don't know. I love it. It's, it's, it's the kind of music that I feel like I can feel, you know, I, like I, there's so yeah, many yeah. different kind that. of like gritty bits to it. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, Ronnie Berna says, Hey Saint, best producer in the world. Hey, Ronnie. <laughs> Ronnie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that guy's a dope producer too. Oh, Hey Ronnie. Yeah. Shout out Ronnie. Cheers to you, Ronnie. Coming. <laughs> um, I have to drink cause I cheers. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, how do you? Oh. Hmm. I don't know what we're gonna win. <laughs> there we go. To your health, Ronnie. To your health. <laughs> um. Yeah. Um. I love the very textural element in your sound. Uh. Is is there any tips you have for or? How, how do you kind of achieve that sort of gritty is that what you're talking about with the rock mixing like yeah 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 exactly just like more um just i guess just more organic mm. kind of sounds you know yeah do you use our do you use samples like do you do kind of like weird field recording samples or do you use a lot of in the box stuff um i box. do a bunch of everything okay <laughs> like your, yeah your terminology is good in, in the, the box, box. Yeah. You got it. Um, I do a bunch of, of, of everything, you know, sometimes I'll record myself. Sometimes I'll literally just grab a microphone and be like, nah, 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 nah. And <laughs> Fuck yeah. like, literally make just random noises and then I'll sample that and just, and throw it in there. Yes. Um, I, but yeah, I mean, I'll do a bunch of everything, whatever sounds good to me, I'll, I'll use, you know what I mean? <laughs> Ronnie says you've been blessed by the gods of the Greek ancients, and that's why your music is so good. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Sacrifice any virgins lately? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know if the Greeks were wow. into that. That's amazing. Dad's Junk got their St. Punk shirt in the mail, so oh, congrats. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Do you design uh, yeah. your merch too? You've got such a cool design palette. Uh, very classic 70s Sex Pistols kind of punk uh, yeah, yeah. vibe to it. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I, yeah, it's kind of, um, I, I do a lot of my own stuff, uh, but we, you know, we kind of use a bunch of, of people to, you know, like here and there, depending on the release um, and you know, depending on what we're trying to make. Yeah. Um, so like the shirt designs, um, I found, or, my team found a guy who uh, was was doing a lot of really cool stuff, and so we hit him up for these designs cool. because he had a certain aesthetic that yeah. had kind of this uh, kind of like scribbly line art skull type stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that was really cool. So so we used him for that. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it just depends really. But I do a lot of the stuff myself. That's cool. I mean, it's also good to like share the love and support yeah, artists exactly. and things yeah, like that. You, you can't do everything. So yeah. it's, it's good to like have people, you know, in their, like their influences come into your world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Going back to the beginning of your career a little bit, um, you haven't been, you're, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're relatively new to the electronic dance music scene, but you've made some serious moves in a short amount of time. And I think your debut release came out on Confessions. Is that right? Yeah. How did you get linked up with that crew? That's a great label. Uh, and you fit right yeah. in there. But yeah. it was it was kind of, um, you know, it was uh, just my manager really pitching all the music to as many people as possible and confession just kind of took a chance on it. And it was kind of like, you know, when I got the email that confession was in, I was like, Oh shit. Like this is some street cred right here. Yeah, for real. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, nice so, manager. So, Good job, manager. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Josh. Um, so they, uh, yeah, they, they kind of launched my career a little bit. Um, and yeah, so I'm definitely thankful for them. That's awesome. Have, I think I read that you have an indie label of your own or you're working on an indie label. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah CD records. Um, so that is something that, I mean, that's something that I've always wanted to do. Just being an independent artist. Yeah. You know, and you've like, had a lot of experience with labels, I'm sure, <laughs> with all your. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why can't we do this ourselves? Like what, like, why do we have to go here? And I get it like money and like, yeah. Right? Yeah. But, you know, I mean, Macklemore, even though I don't love his music, like, he did it completely independent. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's, there's no reason why you can't do it like that. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, there's things you have to do before, you know, you get to that point. Um, but it's in the works, you know, we, we, um, we're working on it. And I think in, in 2021, we're, we're really gonna um, push it hard. That's exciting. I know. What a weird time to like 
get something off the ground. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah, totally. But I, I totally, you know, understand where, you know, where all these smaller artists are coming from. And um, yeah. So yeah, I, I don't want to, I want to push as much good music out there as possible. And when it's your schedule, you get to put it out when you want to. Cause I've heard yeah. that working with big yeah. labels can sometimes be such a headache. You're like, Oh man, you, yeah, you'll, you'll have a track done and then seven months later it'll finally be released or a year later it'll finally be released because of the schedule of the label, you know? So, and obviously like if I'm, you know, if I'm starting my own label, I got to kind of handle that as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, nice of you to give yourself more work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. um, but uh, yeah, of course it just, it just frees you up for, for everything. Yeah. So yeah. what else uh, have you been working on in quarantine? Are you keeping busy besides these tracks that you've put out? Are you creating more tracks? Uh, are you charging your laser for the day that we do get to go outside again? Oh, man. <laughs> yes. God, I can't wait. Until I know. Normal things again. And like, you know, we've gotten a little better because people understand that like you have to wear masks now and that that enables us to like do more. Wear your mask. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wear your fucking mask. <laughs> That'll be the next, the next angry Saint Punk track. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I can't wait till we can actually do normal, normal things, mm -hmm. play shows. Um, but uh, I've been, you know, just working on as much music as possible, trying to do my um, my tutorials. Yeah. Friends. Um, I saw those uh, online. How's that going? Talk to me about that. It's it's going good. Um, you know, I haven't been doing uh, it as as frequently as I wanted to, just because I've been busy with other stuff. I feel that life yeah, is hectic. There, yeah, exactly. But there is one topic um, that I want to make a new one on, so I, so I already have it planned. I just got to actually film it. Nice. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to try and do it as much as, as possible. So, you know, it's, it's kind of my way of giving back a little bit. Um, and, you know, I feel like there's there's so many so many videos out there and so many people that are kind of doing the same thing that I kind of want to make it somewhat unique. Yeah. You know, that, you know, it's not what everybody else is talking about. So. Totally. I mean, that's true. But I have to wait for that inspiration to kind of come. <laughs> Hey, I am a firm believer in, uh, I mean, consistency is key, but quality over quantity when it comes yeah. down to it. Yeah. And once that information is out there, it's out there and people can reach it whenever they want to. And yeah. it'll be nice just to have the next idea when it comes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Fuck these Spotify guys who are like, artists need to drop a song a month. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, see, that's the thing. It's like you have to, like, continue this consistency, like, so you can keep being relevant in people's heads. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, by no means do you want to just throw out, throw away songs. Right, right? Yeah. yeah. You were supposed to have a tour this year, I believe, before uh, COVID happened. Yeah, I mean, we were supposed to have a couple tours, actually. Yeah. Um, was, uh, yeah, so... That sucks. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry about that. But do you think that uh, when things clear up, are, are you, are you, do you have some cool ideas like lined up for that celebration when we get to have it? I guess maybe it's not even something you can think about too much. Yeah. I mean, of course, like there's, I, you know, there's a billion ideas, right? Once, once this is all over, like what we could do, it, I think it's really going to come down to what's, what's actually possible. Yeah, that's you know, true. Like what what restrictions are once we can have shows? Like, and where? Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Of of course, once what once we can, you know, we're gonna hit the ground running. Like, yeah, we're gonna do as many as as we possibly can. So, yeah, it's just yeah, we'll mm. we'll, we'll see when that when that happens. I mean, a lot of people are saying not until late twenty twenty one. I. I wouldn't be surprised if it takes a while, personally. Um, yeah. We got to do things the safe way. Yeah. Uh, Gray Matter Music will be ready to see you in Seattle uh, when it's safe, though. Hell yeah. Yeah, Gray Matter. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to uh, that, that, Seattle, that Seattle scene up there. Yeah? You had yeah, some fun yeah, in yeah. Seattle in your day? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah actually, actually uh, the band actually recorded an EP up in Seattle. 
Oh, nice. Grunge, yeah. grunge roots. Tapping yeah, right in we, there. Yeah, we went out to, um, yeah, we stayed up there for like a week and recorded an EP. Um, and we're like, yeah, let's go to like downtown and check out like the old like grunge spots. Yes. And, and like we went down there, I think it was Broadway. I think it's like the main, the main street. And we went up there and we're like, yeah, this isn't that cool. <laughs> Like, yeah. it was, it was kind of like, I don't know, it was just kind of weird, weird vibe. I totally yeah. feel that. But that's why that music comes out of a place like that, you know, because it's yeah. not really that cool. And it's like drab and gray and industrial. Like, that's how I felt. Uh, I got to go to Manchester a couple of years ago. And that is the place where like the Smiths and Joy Division and yeah. uh, all these like uh, New Order and things like that came from. And uh, I just remember thinking like, Oh yeah, I can hear. I can see how all that like kind of sad, fucking wow. dark music <laughs> came. That makes sense. It's just like raining all the time, and yeah, yeah. yeah totally. <laughs> you know, we 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 spent a lot of time up in in Portland. Um, yeah, we had this producer that we worked with up there, um, and we 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 did a bunch of tours on the West Coast, and so we we um, we stopped there a bunch. In Portland's an interesting place too. Yes. It's like, it, it has the most, I don't know if it still does, but it did back then, um, the most strip clubs per capita. Shut up. Of any other city in the U.S. Atlanta wants to talk to them. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, they might be in there now. No, I yeah, kind of believe it, though. I believe it. Yeah, and I mean, it's such a weird town. Like, it's, uh, it's a, a port town, so it's, and like, the city is like right on the water. Yeah. Uh, and it's just kind of grungy and grimy and the strip club vibe. And the club <laughs> Did you go vibe. to any? You know, we didn't actually go to any strip clubs. I don't know why. We were like too into doing our music. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When, when was that ever the case? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I, I <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, now, now Vegas, on the other hand. Oh. That, that's a different story. <laughs> you just walk down the street. They're right there handing you flyers. Yeah, Vegas <laughs> I guess is the spot for sure. I, I was uh, a couple years. Um, I was definitely a Vegas rat, like crazy. Yeah. What's the craziest like, Vegas story you got? Seven, eight times a year. Um, <laughs> um, this is by no means the craziest, but it's a pretty good one. Okay. Um, so my brother and my girlfriend and I went out to Vegas one, one time. So my brother went out there for work and um he had a place for the whole weekend and he was like hey you guys should come out because i got a free spot and like just you know cruise out it's vegas like, okay. yeah um so, you know so we go out there uh you know you do the vegas thing and just drink so you fucking can't can't stand <laughs> anymore um but one night we went to to surrender at at the encore um uh and saw uh, just like saw a show, like whoever was playing there, and we like closed it out like 4 a.m. and right outside Surrender, there's a little cafe, uh, and it's open, you know, because everybody's because it's Vegas, playing. yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and so we went over there, got some pizza and like got some wine for some reason. I don't know why? <laughs> You're wine. feeling classy. Like, hey, what's some wine with our pizza? Yeah. You're a sommelier. Were you showing off? Or are you like, oh, it's yeah, a good yeah. vintage? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so, it, so it's four in the morning and we ordered the house cab because, you know, the house cab, the house, house wine anywhere. It's like <laughs> the cheapest one, right? Yeah, exactly. So we're just like, yeah, let's just get that. So whatever. Uh, we get the bill. And oh, we no. we see that the house cab is like $26 a glass. What the fuck? Yeah. And so we're like, what? <laughs> like, like, no. This does it even $26? taste like $26? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're like, no, we're not. This is what the hell? Like, one, your server should have told us that it was this amount of money because that's just unusual for a glass of wine. Oh uh, yeah. And then, and then two, like, let me speak to the manager. Like, <laughs> we're fine to we're fine to pay the food, but like, can you like help us out with this wine a little bit? Like, yeah. Come on. Come on. So I'm, I'm a wine over. expert. We're not that drunk, asshole. <laughs> yeah. Manager comes over and he's just like, "No, sorry, you got to pay it." I was just like, "What?" Like come on, man, like, work with us here, like, your server didn't tell us, he's like, no, you gotta pay it, so I was like, fine, fuck you, so we just walked out, and I was like, I'm not gonna pay this shit, 
So we walked out, and I think before that, he was like, you guys leave, we're going to, like, arrest you or, like, whatever. I was like, fuck you. So we, so we left, and as soon as we start leaving, security, like, from every entrance, fuck. like, starts, like, uh. surrounding us. So my brother uh, jets out the door, out the front door, climbs over a wall and onto their golf course that they got out No there. way. Yeah, and then uh, my girlfriend and I were like, fuck, because I... I I didn't want to like just jam and like ditch. Her yeah, girlfriend. right. Yeah, you just time. ditch your girlfriend. Yeah, so I stayed with her, and we were kind of like looking both directions. We have security like bearing down on us. We're like, oh fuck, man. Uh, okay, so um, so they so they grab us. They take her into the like casino, into the casino jail. No way. Yeah, where they have all the hookers. And <laughs> oh my god. So, so they totally like book her in casino jail. They like take her picture, and she and like she was telling me the story like when she was on the bench like waiting, like all the hookers were like, "What are you in for?" Oh honey? no, like, <laughs> dealing wine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so and so they take me back to the restaurant, and I was like, "Look, I will pay this bill. I have no problem paying the bill if you take the wine off of the bill." And so finally. They take the wine off. Wow. All of that nonsense for just for them to That's like, insane. Oh, the wine off. Absurd. Yeah. That's so, it. When anyway, you so so we uh, so we got banned from the encore um for life, but <laughs> but we've been back since So there will be no encore. No, you've been back to the encore? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've been back since and there hasn't been any uh, that's insane. Wow. Yeah. That was a good story. Thank you for yeah. sharing. And when yeah. you inevitably make your line of wine as merch, you should you should call it a uh, rebel wine or something. <laughs> hey, there you go. Yeah, I'm into it. House wine. Do I yeah, just yeah. House, yeah. House wine? <laughs> That's a good one. House wine. House wine. It goes with the yeah. genre. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> um, I want to get to a couple things here. Um, Ronnie wants to know if you're a Hennessy or Jack Daniels man, although clearly you're a house wine man. No. Jack all the way, for sure. I used to, um, be before playing in the band, I used to always, my, my like, drink before playing was was a beer and a shot of Jack. Classic. Yeah. So. Is that a Boilermaker? What it was? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, any news on the Clank collab? Is that going to come out? Um, it's fire. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, it, that's a that's a fun one. Um, uh, that actually happened right before quarantine too. Clank and nice. I got together. And you were actually together. That's nice. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so we'll see. So, um, yeah, who knows? We'll keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Maybe a little true. quarantine gift. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. along here. Uh, well, I've had you for a good amount of time here. Uh, it's the end of the hour, but I want to know, first of all, uh, on their way out, we're going to watch the 911 video. Oh, so yeah. I'd love to hear about that song and that video. I know you told me that it was pretty fun to make. Talk about yeah. DIY videos. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, so that song, I mean, the, um, the idea behind it is just kind of like, you know, when you get that late night text. I love it. When you go home. <laughs> Um, you know, and, uh, and so the, you know, so the concept of the video was trying to, trying to show that idea. Um, that desperate uh, fucking hustle. Yeah, getting a call. yeah, well, so, yeah, so, so the idea, or so the story of the video is, of uh, this guy, he gets this text, but then his phone dies and he's like, shit, I have no way of, of like getting a hold or getting an Uber or doing anything. So I got to like jam over there. <laughs> Um, and then once he arrives, he, he finds out that it was a mistake. It wasn't actually. I know. <laughs> um, but it was, but yeah, it was, um, my friend and I, uh, it was just us two who filmed that video. Um, and I had a little rig, uh, a little like, um, like a, uh, oh, uh, what are they called? A, gim a gimbal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Those little almost kind of like weight holder things. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and we were just running around K-Town, and I was just running alongside him everywhere that we could to, like, film this. And we, we both, we didn't stretch before this, so we oh, no. like, cramps and, like, 
hold muscles in our in our thighs. Yeah. You're not a 12 year old skate punk anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But it was a lot of fun. Uh, I miss those days. Yeah. Well, I hope that you put a video out soon. You should you should hit the streets and have some fun. What else is yeah. going on? You know. Yeah, for sure. Be cool. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything else you want to say uh, before I let you go? Have the yeah. rest of your day. Yeah, just everyone stay safe, uh, stay stay vigilant, um, keep fighting for the good for the good fight. Yeah, I know. As uh, long as we can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, hopefully, we'll we'll see everyone soon. Well said. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming through. It was so Thank lovely getting to me. chat with you. Yeah. I, I look forward to your next release. Have yes, you back soon. So yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Have a good rest of the day. You Bye. too.